Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. Now I've come into this video with no clear idea of actually what it is I'm doing. Um, it's just been one of those evenings. I've been very busy recently. I have to apologise, it's been a bit of a lack of uploads. Um, it just isn't the time in the day at the moment. Now the weather's closed in. Um, I was hoping to get um, some strip lights or some form of lighting in the greenhouse ready for this winter. Exactly for this reason, so I'd be able to film and uh, at least do some of the videos out there. It keeps me out of the house. I don't have to worry about disturbing the kids and I don't take up much room in here. So um, that was the plan, it hasn't happened. I'm literally absolutely skinned to the moment, got no money at all. So uh, I'm just trying to sort of sell some stuff off to get some cash together for Christmas presents and stuff. So working really hard at that at the moment. As a result, I haven't had much spare time for making any new content. So with the kids in bed, it's getting dark. Uh, well, I say getting dark, it's completely pitch black outside. I thought I might sort of take this opportunity to have a quick run out. I've got some things we can have a, uh, well, I'm not gonna have a look at anything. It's pitch black, in fact, it's bright orange or bright purple, the greenhouse, the LED grow lights are on, so it looks really weird. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna use this video to, to actually spend some time repotting some of the Darlingtonia seedlings I've had. They've been in quite a few of my other videos, so you've probably noticed them. They're becoming really crowded. They've grown really, really well. I grew them from seed. And it's getting to that point now where actually I need to divvy them up a little bit because they're just taking up, they're just gonna end up, it's just such a mass of roots, they'll be unseparable. So um, we're gonna walk out to the greenhouse and get those in a minute. And then we're gonna set up in the, uh, at the kitchen table here and give them a good sorting out as well, do some potting up. So I've got some nice little pots ready for those, so that'd be quite cool. Um, one, of the, uh, one of my orchids had a mealy bug outbreak, which my instantaneous reaction was to freak out. So. The plant got immediately isolated, taken out. It was, it was that massive no beer orchid I've got, the Nambo Breeze generic and whatever it's called. It's very generic, but it's a, it's a really good plant. It's going massive. But yeah, I've spotted five or six mealy bugs on it. So I was like, boom, it's coming straight out. It's been out in the garden actually in some of the cold weather. It was fine. It hasn't struggled with, with the drop in temperature. It's a pretty robust plant. Everything's been neemed, bleached. I just went completely cleaning mental because that's just not what I need when I'm pretty much you know, about to lock the greenhouse down ready for winter now. I'm doing my most tedious, hated job at the moment, which is putting all the bubble wrap up. I hate it. Putting it up, taking it down, absolute nightmare. What I need to do is get some like 13 mil like monster um, um, polycarbonate. That would be incredible. Something really insulative. Um, because it just means I wouldn't have to put that bloody bubble wrap up, I hate it. Um, anyway, so that's what I'm doing. So like I said, I didn't really want an outbreak of anything really aggressive or anything really at all. So I went kind of overboard. Everything got nuked, neem oiled. Uh, um, well, this plant over here got bug killered. I just couldn't handle it. So it completely repotted. All the roots got washed off because the trouble is if you kill the plant, they kill the uh, mealy bugs on the plant, they go down into the roots or the root crown, they lay eggs and they'll also feed on the roots, so it just comes back again. So you've got to really nuke it, you've got to be super on top of it, otherwise they will just come back. So it got repotted, the whole plant got doused, washed completely, repotted. It's over here, we're gonna have a look at it, although I must apologize for the light, we're in the house, we're in the kitchen, there's hardly any light here, so things are probably gonna look a little bit dark and grainy, but let's have a look at the orchid. Okay, so here's the orchid. This is my, uh, my big dendrobium, my big nobile type dendrobium. And this is the one that had the, um, the mealy bug um, infestation on it. So it got literally just completely stripped it. Some of these, this is just an old cane. These are just dying off now. In fact, I, I, I'm sort of relishing getting more and more of the, get out of it you, leaves off of it. And also clearing some of these sheaves off. Like I say, it's been attacked with bug killer because you've got to have, you've got to have something potent enough to knock the insects back. And then a quick dousing of neem oil. And it's obviously had, you know, using a pesticide on it, it's had pretty much zero impact. I notice up here there's already a spider, which is happily making a new web on it, which is great. It's just that's just free pest control. So despite using a pesticide on it, everything has moved back in on it. So we've got no no more signs of mealy bugs that I can see. Certainly any that are that are alive, everything's dead on there. It's got nice glossy leaves. I've covered it in neem oil and the spiders are already coming back in to make homes in it. So it's had a very limited impact uh, on my environment around here. I even sprayed it inside. I even, even risked poisoning the family to avoid spraying it outside. So quick dusting off with that. Neem oil, repot, bang, done, sorted. Keep an eye on that over the next three or four weeks. Make sure we don't see any more coming back. I'll just keep re-dousing it with neem oil 
I've had a little look, I can't see any evidence of the dastardly things. No, it's just a piece of old leaf. But like I said, this close to winter, absolute nightmare. The last thing I need is an outbreak of insects. So that one's been done and I've seen, keeping a real close eye on stuff in the greenhouse. And I've seen, there's been no evidence of anything in there. So I'm pretty confident that that, that small outbreak has been controlled. But like anything, time will tell. So fingers crossed, like I say, it's gonna get locked down, bubble wrap up, joints are all sealed. I've redone some of the polycarbonate sheets because they're blown, so I've got some waterproofing tape, that's all been done. Um, so yeah, we're getting a real panic on it. Now we've got some warm weather, so temperature's really mild again. But uh, let's wander out there and we'll go and grab those Darlingtonia seedlings. Okay, right, let's head on out there. You have to excuse the uh, wobbliness. I've got hold of you again, so uh, without the most stable of hands. Let's have a look outside, see what it's like. So it's absolutely pitch black out here, apart from the greenhouse, which is a real purple colour at the moment because it's the UV and the LED, really offensive light. When it's completely dark out here and the outside light isn't on, it looks even weirder. Like it lights up the whole back garden. My neighbours must be like, what on earth's going on? What's he growing in there? Right. Right, into the greenhouse. Try not to crash you into the door as well as we go inside. Right. Okay, so you can see the grand, the grand sum of my uh, bubble wrap installation so far consists of one sheet across the roof. That was it, and that, that was almost enough to drive me suicidal. I was just like, can't be dealing with this right now. And uh, that's on a timer, so that's just gone out now, so it's really, really dark in here. I know this camera is supposed to have pretty good, um, uh, a pretty good sensor, so it shouldn't be too dark. Um, but over here in this weird ethereal light, we can see the Darlingtonia seedlings. They're over here, uh, and Joshua Adelaide, which is really making a comeback now after the uh, after the weather's improved because uh, it hates the hot, dry weather. So everything in here is looking really, really cool. Okay, so you're probably not going to be able to see this, but one of the developing. Let's point you down there. You might be able to see it by my finger, this developing Darlingtonia seedling has grown inside the head of another Darlingtonia. So it's actually inside. There's two joined together here, so I'm gonna have to cut that. Luckily I've got a pair of scissors just here. Oh, it's like hurting a child, it's horrible. <clears throat> right, okay. Let's see if we can see that closer up. That was really peculiar. So yeah, what's actually happened there is I don't know whether you can see that on the camera, that darling Tonya, the one I've just cut there, that's grown up inside the little hole underneath the other developing seedling. And so you've got a double-headed, it's, it's like, a, like Medusa, a double-headed, I well, know she, she only had one head, but she had snake hair, but it's okay, it wasn't a very, very good an analogy, but unusual and worthy of note all the same. So I've got these, let's take them back inside and sort them out. Here's a fun little close up of my Darlingtonia. This is what they look like at the moment in these pots. They're in these little white pots to sort of help reflect some of the heat. Although to be honest in the greenhouse, they haven't really been struggling too much. They've uh, grown quite a lot this year considering they're only seedlings. I guess this is two years growth. Yeah, I guess this is, well, this is how far you can get Darlingtonia uh, in two years. This is what they end up looking like. So the first part of this video, I've got a new position to film from because uh, my friend lovingly made a nice sported beach bench, which we've sat on down here. That's what it looks like. Absolutely stunning uh, piece of timber. So that's what I'm sat on at the moment, but it's good because it means you guys can sit literally right next to me uh, whilst I'm doing this. If I, especially if I zoom you out, that's about as far as it's going to go. And what I can do then, I can actually open these up right in front of your very eyes. So that's going to be good. If I stick that up there, it's going to be a bit dark, but we'll be able to have a look what they look like. All I'm gonna do is literally just tip them straight out of here. Um, there's lots of roots in the bottom, like that. And then I'm gonna break all of this 
material up and off of here and very carefully try and get the plantlets out without causing because uh, darling tony is spurred by stolons so they'll produce little runners under the ground um, by which way they are able to spread um, so i don't want to break any of those up so i've got to be real careful and try and tease out each as one i'm going to put them down here in the meantime so that they don't get damaged and they come apart quite easily i'm going to give these a good wash as well i really want to get a lot of the old media off of them now they're in a, what looks like a very gravelly cp mix so they're in just normal peat moss and uh, what looks like it's probably the classic and I, I use a lot of it aquarium gravel if i zoom in you should be able to see A little bit closer up what they look like so no signs of the uh, little stolons the little runners that go underneath the soil but they've got a nice healthy root system on them that's all this is hanging down here i don't want to damage that so what i'm going to use is i'm going to take get these get the worst of this material off of them it's in pretty good condition it doesn't smell bad or anything like that it smells uh, it smells fine it smells sweet and quite fresh really to be honest so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get each one of these out get the majority of the uh old media pulled off of them as much as I dare without damaging any of the roots and then they're going to go back in this blue saucer which I use for doing most of my repotting um, and I'm going to just literally point the hose at them and give them a really good spraying off. All I want to do is I want to just basically have plant root system and that's it before I pop them up so I'm just getting to get rid of as much of this old media as possible uh, so I can replace it and th these guys will respond really really well to uh, to fresh media, like most carnivorous plants, I mean, they haven't really got much of a root system anyway. But you pop them in, uh, you pop them in um, fresh media, and they go absolutely mental. You end up with, I always see, it, even with the nepenthes, a bit of fresh media, loads of new growth. They love it. So that's what we're going to be doing. That's about as much as I dare peel off, just so I don't damage any of those really fine roots. Pop them down there, and this old media doesn't get wasted. This goes on my comp compost pile. So I'm going to go off once I've zoomed you out. Mm, there we go. The little plants are just down in front of you there on the table. So these guys are going to get washed off. The old media which is in here is going to go into my composter and uh, get turned into useful, lovely compost for uh, when I re-landscape the garden this year. So I'll get these washed off, uh, I'll do the other ones and then we'll come back in a minute once they're all nice and clean and we'll pot them up. Okay, check it out. So these are the uh, these have all been washed off now, I've taken all the media off, picked all the moss off, but I possibly, you know, as much as I could uh, within, you know, uh, what, what's realistic. So I didn't damage any of the, uh, the roots if I bring it in. Hopefully you guys are going to be able to see the root system on these guys. A little bit, obviously, where they've all sort of grown um, away from the centre of the pot. They're a bit of a, they've got a funny shape, but there's some new growth over this side. So when they've had a bit of a chance to... Uh, uh, grow on they should look a little less weird or a little less one-sided but surprising isn't it you think you've got all of this you've got god i don't know like 30 maybe no maybe 25 uh, little tiny pictures here and supported by like five roots I and mean, you just go to show the typical bog plants water is not a major issue for these guys uh, especially where these guys grow um, they've got they often grow around seeps and streams there's lots of constantly cold alpine water running over their root system so I mean, water really is not a consideration for them usually i'm sure they experience some droughts and burning and stuff you know in dry season but these guys are very robust very easy to grow um, from seed like super easy highly recommend them and to be honest if i pot these up i could pretty much put these straight outside this year these guys would be absolutely fine they can handle super cold temperatures like completely frozen covered in snow and they'll be totally fine so what I'm going to do is pop those guys up now. So that's, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got eight. These two here are probably my biggest, biggest ones. Pop them over there. Um, so, and I've still got another, I've got another two pots of these to do yet. So um, what I'm going to be potting them into, this is almost like a standard CP mix, but there's actually a lot of sand and a lot of grit in here. This is just 50%, well, it's not 50%, but there's lots of perlite in here and peat moss. Uh, and it's a dry mix at the moment because it's just easier to work with a dry mix. 
if you put a dry mix in the in with the roots, you know, it's not dry dry, it's not bone dry, it's damp, uh, but it's easier than using that sludge to put it in. So if you put this in, get the roots, it pats in all around the roots, you can tap it down, get it nice and tight. Then when you water it, hydrates nicely and settles around the roots. So I would always recommend, if possible, working with a slightly drier um, dry mix than usual. I'm going to be using these little square pots here, like these ones, because they stack. So, for, uh, for instance, you know, there's no loss of space between them. You put them together, there's no gaps, so you're saving space. Uh, and these guys are going to go in the greenhouse um, for the winter. I mean, I could happily, like I said before, happily put them out, but they're just going to go on the trays. They're going to look nice, and it's hopefully going to get them to really put on loads and loads and loads more growth, so I can have some mature plants. I've got a friend who is growing these in the UK at the moment, and they are fully mature. They are... They're huge and they're producing viable seeds. This is where these came from. So um, that's what I want to get as well. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do now is I pop these, go ahead and pop these up. I'll probably film one because um, it's not that interesting. And then what I'll do is I'll do the rest and we'll tune back in for the end of the video. So nice and simple, really. What I'm going to do is put a load of media in the bottom of these pots, just like this, just to start off with. And then holding said little tiny Darlingtonia over the top of the pot like this, just by working around the edge, just fill in. Doesn't matter if they get a little bit of soil on, it makes no difference. That'll wash off when we water it anyway. And just twist the pot and keep patting it down as you go around. Much easier, like I said, to work with a dry mix when you're doing this. If you do it with a wet mix, it's, well, I find it a lot harder. It's just like dealing with slurry. So there's a nice big bit of peat there in the way. This way, it's a lot easier to get it into all the cracks and crevices of the pot. It's easier to pat down, so you're getting it around those roots. Like I said before, it doesn't matter if you get any of the uh, compost on top of the plant because when we give it our first washing, uh, first watering, it's going to rinse all that off anyway. So you need to make sure you pat it in with your fingers, firm it all the way around the plant like this. Otherwise, you need to make sure you firm it down because otherwise, when you fill it up, uh, when you water it, if there are any cavities or voids that you haven't filled with soil uh, with the potting media. Uh, they'll sink. I've done it plenty of times myself. So you, you go to water it and then all of this compost just drops below the height um, at, what you, at which you'd finished potting and it makes the plants look really weird. So my advice is to always firm it in properly with your fingers as you're doing it like this and give it a tap as well and that'll help everything settle down nicely. And it was always surprising how much you actually need to do this. I will definitely have underestimated the amount I've made up because that's what I always do. It's kind of my signature maneuver. And we can just lift the plant up slightly and just make sure we're getting a nice cover all the way around. And you want to leave a little bit of space because what I'll do is once um, these guys have sort of got over, I don't, I don't think they're going to sulk. They're just not that kind of plant. So they're not going to sulk because you've disturbed them. Um, they'll just carry on growing as if nothing's happened. They probably won't even notice this. Um, what I will do is plant some sphagnum moss in the pots. I've got some growing in the greenhouse, uh, which just is just a really attractive top dressing. Um, so I'll top the pots off with those. So I want to leave a little bit of space for the moss to grow in, and then it will spill satisfyingly over the edge of the pots, um, like a big green carpet, which looks really attractive. And that's how I like to grow most of my CPs because it looks more aesthetically pleasing. It looks like you've got your tiny four inch squared section of bog in which your plant is growing, which is cool, I think. So that's pretty much him done now. Just get rid of some of the bits of perlite. You might want to blow on those just gently and it just lifts the little bits of perlite off the plant because otherwise when you wash it, they won't, when you water, I keep saying washing. I've done the washing up. I don't know why I keep saying that. It'll um, it won't dislodge. They'll get stuck on top of the plant and they look unsightly. So best thing to do is just give it a quick blow. That gets rid of those. It also scatters fine particles of peat and perlite across uh, your kitchen um, for the kids to tread all over the remainder of the house. 
a bit later on the following day. So that's always really good. And I'm sure the wife really appreciates it. Right, so that's that guy done. That's one. I'll get on and do the rest and then we'll tune in afterwards and have a look at them once they're all done. Right, that's these guys all potted up now. It's a bit of an ordeal, uh, I've got to admit. Uh, I'm not exactly looking forward to the next tray because I reckon I've got about twice this much to put up yet. Uh, but these guys are done and uh, they, they look really cool. They look much better separated out. They're going to have a lot more root space. There's going to be a lot more available nutrients uh, and growing room for them. I mean, Obviously, we've already discussed for their bog plants, so they haven't really got much of a root system, but they do produce runners, so they produce stolons, which go out underneath the soil and produce new little plantlets. So this will encourage the production of those. Um, the fresh media is going to, uh, there's, there's a, not a huge amount of nutrients, what with it being peat. It's still going to, there's still going to be macronutrients and minerals in there as well. So we should see significant pitcher jumps. Uh, it's, they're going to be able to grow into this space a lot better. Uh, I also took some time to uh, repot my Brachinia reductor. This is a, a type of carnivorous bromeliad that grows on top of the tapuis in places like Venezuela. That's really, really cool. Uh, so that grows alongside my Nepenthes. Similar mix for that, really, but it was just something, it was sort of languishing in the pot that it was in. So I thought, whilst I've got the stuff out, let's get it in there. Let's help it along and give it a bit more of a, you know, a, a lift. You know, I do care about you, honest, you know, that sort of thing. So hopefully he's going to pick up as well. So. Thank you very much. Um, for, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up like down below if you have enjoyed it. Once again, sorry there has been a bit more uh, regular content for you guys. Um, it's just, it just isn't enough time in the day at the moment. And uh, so I've got to fit this in around everything else. So uh, please appreciate that. Stick with me. I'm still going to try and get uh, a video a week up for you guys. Um, I've got a, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Fantastic. Uh, cheers for all of that. I do really, really massively appreciate it. And um, I've got three really wicked Bulbophyllum blooms which are just about to open. So it's that autumn. Everything's sort of noticed the diurnal change and uh, uh, quite a few of my Bulbophyllums have put on lots of new flower spikes. One of them I'm exceptionally excited and those of you who are most attentive will probably know which orchid it's going to be. It's a Bulbophyllum and it's my favourite and it's got a flower spike on it. So I'm very excited about that. So as soon as those guys open, we'll be having an in-depth look at those, having a look at how I care for them as well. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited, some cool stuff coming up. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you all again soon.